Welcome to It's Your Case, presented at VetCity.com. I am Manuel Pinilla, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today's example is a six-year-old female neutered Bernese Mountain Dog presenting for weight loss and cough. Once you have reviewed the radiographs using your systematic approach, then you are ready to watch this video. I will highlight the most important findings on these thoracic radiographs, and we are going to start by taking a closer look to the right lateral view. The first thing that I noticed is this soft tissue opacity located caudal and dorsal to the heart. If you look ventral to the mass, you will notice the left caudal bronchus, which is severely pushed in a ventral direction. This is what we call a mass effect, and it helps us identify the origin of the lesion. A common cause of an increase of tissue opacity in this area, for example, would be the enlargement of the left atrium. However, remember the left atrium is always ventral to the carina, uh, so an enlarged left atrium would cause displacement of this bronchus and the carina in a dorsal direction instead of ventral. Now, if you look at the dorsal ventral view and try to identify the lesion, I cannot clearly see it, and the reason for that is because it is located somewhere here, which is superimposed on the heart. The fact that we don't see it on the dorsal ventral view is further evidence that this is a mediastinal lesion. If this was a lung lesion, we would probably see it in one side or the other. Now, if we go back to the lateral view, you may have noticed another soft tissue opacity, in this case, ventral to the trachea and cranial to the heart. This is also creating a mass effect. You can see the trachea is pushed in a dorsal direction. If we look in the dorsal ventral view, you may be able to notice that lesion. You can see that the mediastinum, which goes from here to here, is actually widened, and it measures probably over three times the width of a vertebral body. And there is another feature, if you look at the trachea, it is severely pushed to the right, and that is indicating a mass effect, probably due to structure being located here to the left. Now, looking back to the lateral uh, radiographs, we can conclude that this dog has got severe lymphadenopathy. This one here is going to be the middle tracheobronchial lymph node, and this is going to be probably the left uh, lateral tracheobronchial uh, lymph node. Probably the cranial mediastinal lymph nodes could also be enlarged. Regarding the differentials for this case, uh, I suppose neoplasia would be a top of the list with two options, lymphoma and malignant histiocytosis. Malignant histiocytosis seems probably more likely because of the breed predisposition to the disease. Other differentials that I would not rule out would be things such as lymphomatoid granulomatosis, even some infectious causes uh, cannot be ruled out, but again, those seem less likely than neoplasia. Regarding further investigations in this case, uh, sampling these lymph nodes here would be extremely complicated. You would need CT guidance and you would have to go through quite a lot of uh, healthy lung tissue and the potential for complications is high. You may end with a pneumothorax or hemorrhage or something like that. However, the main two differentials here, malignant histocytosis and lymphoma, they are very often multicentric. So there, there's a chance that you will have other lesions associated to these ones in areas that are easier to sample, particularly the abdomen, for example, the liver, the spleen, uh, or even the peripheral lymph nodes. Uh, in this case, following an abdominal ultrasound, we identified a liver mass, which was sampled and confirmed malignant histocytosis. Now, be sure to review the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening, and remember, it is your case, so please post your questions on the social media.